Hi, Hutchins Hogan Circle. Uh, this is Pastor Corey, obviously, and I'm so grateful that Jean invited me to be a part of your meeting this evening. Uh, I'm always grateful for that invitation. And so I thought tonight um, that even though we can't be together, uh, that we would uh, send and provide a short devotional. Um, and so I'm so grateful for this platform, for Zoom, for enabling us to be able to be together. And instead of just hearing me talk, I thought it might be a lot of fun to invite one of my dear friends, one of the people in my close circle, Reverend Lindsay Freeman, who is an ordained elder in the Virginia Annual Conference and a pastor there. She also was my uh, roommate in seminary for three years um, back at our Duke Divinity School days and has been just one of the, the most important people in my life since then. And so I invited her to have a conversation about the season we find ourselves in, the season of Lent. And we're going to talk about it tonight. Uh, we're going to think through it um, in four, four ways, from four perspectives, and that is through scripture, through tradition, ooh, tradition, through reason, and through experience. And those four aspects, those four perspectives um, in the tradition of Methodism, we like to call that the Wesley quadrilateral. And it's a tool we use to think through theological issues. And uh, it's something John Wesley used, not outright. He didn't name it the Wesley quadrilateral, but we've known that that's how, how it functions and what it is um, since Albert Outler coined that in the 20th century. And so we're going to use that this evening to think through uh, how we understand Lent and how that can be um, a resource and a season for us to deepen our faith. So I want to give Lindsay an opportunity to introduce herself just a little bit more, and then we'll open with prayer. Well, it's so good to be with you all. Um, and as Corey said, I'm coming to you from Virginia. And um, I serve in our conference office helping folks from the moment they have a call to ministry all the way to retirement and everything in between. Um, and so I have the honor of walking alongside people in their call in ministry. Um, and the only other thing I would say is your pastor, Corey, is one of my favorite people. Um, so this is a joy uh, to be doing this and, and to get to be with you all uh, virtually. And we were just talking about what a gift that is. We could not have envisioned doing something like this um, a year ago. And so the creativity right. and just the, the access that this hard, hard season of uh, pandemic has given us is something to be grateful for. So I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful to be with you all. Um, yes. Let us open with a word of prayer. This is a Linton prayer. And so I invite you to join in with me. Almighty God, Lord, where our feet walk, they follow you. Where your hands heal, may ours as well. Where your eyes see, may ours be opened. Where your voice speaks, may our ears hear. As we journey with you in this season, may we receive the gift it is to be your people, to know you as a savior, who suffers, serves, and ultimately resurrects. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. So Lent is the season, as we know, the 40 days from Ash Wednesday until uh, actually the day before Easter. So right. uh, Holy Saturday. And I uh, had a conversation just earlier this afternoon with someone who um, we were talking about uh, the those 40 days and that they don't actually include the Sundays in between mm -hmm. Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday, because um, every Sunday is a feast day, never a fast day. Uh, and so they are many Easter's even as we wait for Easter. And so we want to talk about what these 40 days mean from a scriptural perspective. So I invite Lindsay to tell us a little bit about how we find this tradition revealed to us in the word. Yeah, so I um, I love the prophet Joel um, in chapter two talks about how um, he calls together a community to have a fast, um, to sanctify a people, to um, which is a fancy way of saying to grow <laughs> in their knowledge and love of God, um, and he's blowing a trumpet and calling the people together, and you know Lent for me. Ash Wednesday for me is that blowing of the trumpet and gathering people to say, these 40 days are about growing more and more in the love and knowledge of God um, and growing 
drawing nearer to God. Um, and so that's one scriptural reference that, that makes me think about the, these 40 days. Yeah, I always, I have said this many times to the people of Orange, if there's one fancy theological word I want them to know, it's sanctification. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be made holy, to be made holy, like we grow into holiness. It's not something that we just, comes overnight. Um, uh, and also scripturally, as we find in uh, the beginning of Mark, as Jesus enters into the 40 days of preparation. Pastor Adam talked about this just um, the first Sunday of Lent, that Jesus spends these 40 days being prepared for Jesus's mission and Jesus's ministry. He takes 40 days uh, and he's tempted in that season. He fasts in that season. And so that's also where the tradition comes of, of how long we spend in this season. And we know that 40 is a very important number throughout the, the scriptures. Um, and, and the 40, 40 years in the wilderness, you know, we have uh, these, these seasons and often, we often refer to Lent as a wilderness season mm -hmm. uh, of, of fasting. And so that's where our scriptural foundations come from, uh, both old and, and new. Yeah. Uh, well, traditionally, uh, we what does that look like for the history of the church? How does tradition speak into the practices of Lent? Um, and, uh, and how does our tradition as United Methodists, uh, how, how does that speak into this tradition? So I'll let Lindsay um, begin and share a little bit with us. Yeah, so, um, you know, the observation of Lent and this season um, is over many, many years. Um, but I would say it is fairly recent for um, the United Methodist Church, or I would even say it's it's lesser um, observed. <laughs> um, I know um, I'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about experience, but for me growing up, um, a lot of my Catholic friends um, observed Ash Wednesday and Lent, um, and it was a bigger, um, it, it had bigger emphasis in their congregations. Um, but for me, a little bit less so. Um, but this is a tradition of the church um, that, and Corey will talk more about this, but often prepared people um, as this kind of teaching time up to Easter. Yeah, and Lindsay, uh, we we went through um, probably the the most notorious class in our seminary experience was our very first church history class and folks, yeah. the church fathers in the early tradition. And so we learned a lot about their practices and, and Lent is, is definitely, um, I love that Lindsay said a more recent practice for Methodists or not as, um, as common perhaps as you might find in Catholic church or an Anglican church, or even a Lutheran church, a very, very strong tradition within the Lutheran church. Right. Um, but the, the practice of Lent observing these 40 days, um, began in the fourth century and was long followed time. <laughs> long, long time. So we're in good company. And, <laughs> and when we join in with the, the community of saints in, in practicing this, and for many, um, for many, this was their catechesis time for, for learning and being prepared for the ultimately their baptism on mm -hmm. Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. So there's a strong tradition of, of, of learning, of understanding the faith, um, and also committing to the faith in this season. And then you also have this as an opportunity for folks who uh, have, um, for whatever reason, and we don't talk, we don't use these, these terms necessarily in the Methodist church or in more Protestant um, communities, but any, any folks who have been um, forced away from the, the, the community, excommunicated would have been the word that, that, that Catholics would use early on. But if somebody had been ostracized for whatever reason, this is an opportunity for them to re-engage, to repent. Yeah, and to come back into the, the fold. Um, and I actually, this is a fun fact that uh, somebody mentioned that Ash Wednesday has not been a formal service at the United Methodist Church. It was a formal service for the first time in 1992. So surprising. <laughs> In our lifetime. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so definitely, but the importance of it uh, is very deep for the history of the church universal. Anything else you want to add, Lindsay, about our tradition? 
No, I would just echo, um, I really love the, the teaching and the formation of disciples leading to their baptism, kind of Holy Saturday into Easter Sunday. Um, and just that movement through the season, um, maybe we should bring that back. I like that a lot. And the intentionality of like yes. focused 40 days of, of how can I recognize, as we know, Lent is a season of repentance. Right. Uh, and of, of, this, of understanding our deep, deep need for mm -hmm. a saving God. So, mm -hmm. so that's how the tradition of the church has influenced it. Um, reason uh, is another way that we come, we come to this topic and, um, and thinking through why from, from a, a from an intellectual or a reasonable, um, <laughs> perspective, what, why Lent, what does it have to teach us? Yeah, I really think of mindfulness and using, uh, what God gave us, um, on our minds and, um, not just thinking through how to do Lent or what to give up or what to take on, but really this mindfulness about how might I draw nearer to God in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit in these 40 days. Um, so maybe that's writing something down and you're, you are just repeating it and you're thinking about it and you're praying over it. Um, but it's really about bringing awareness to the mind, um, and intentionality uh, to the mind of um, and what God is calling us to do. Absolutely, uh, we there's so many things vying for our attention in the world, yeah. uh, and and Lent is a it, it calls us to focus our attention. And one way we do that, uh, now we talked a little bit about um, an approach is is the tradition of fasting. Mm. In Lent. Um, yeah. and we, if we think about the, the practice, the spiritual discipline of fasting, which has been used in, and has been observed as a practice of the faith for since the inception, we know Jesus fat, fasted in the wilderness. Um, right. But that understanding that when we um, are denied, we have a greater need, a recognition of our greater need. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's... Um, that practice of giving something up. We you've probably heard a million things people give up, um, but uh, that practice of going without so that God might come in. Come in, yeah. Uh, or that practice of taking on an intentional practice. I love that word intentional. I think fits just so perfectly with Lent. Um, yeah. And, you know, if, can we do something for 40 days? Mm -hmm. Can we? Can we do something that might draw us closer to God for 40 days. Mm -hmm. And finally, our, uh, the last piece of this, um, I always think of it as a square. I don't know, do you yeah. think of it as a square? I think of it square. as a square. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> is experience. So how have we experienced Lent? And I would love for after, after we um, wrap up, after we close, for you all to talk about that. You know, how have you, experience Lent in your lives? How have you practiced it? And what, what has been the benefit? What might have, have come um, through that? Um, but as far as our own experience, experience of the churches we've been involved in, uh, we want to share a little bit of personal testimony and personal witness. So what's your experience with the with practice of Lent then? Yeah, I, I, I find Lent to be um, the most intense season of the year of the church year um and with the season where i'm most attentive to what god is doing and um, you talked about intentionality and i feel like from the moment um that the cross of ashes is made on my forehead to easter sunday i am so um honed in and tuned in to what god is doing i just feel more aware um and so then when it comes to Holy Week and Monday, Thursday and Good Friday and Holy Saturday, it is this visceral experience for me um, of why to your, the way I like the way you said it, why we need a saving God, <laughs> why we need um, Christ uh, to be our redeemer. 
Yeah, and I, I like the thought of from the moment you're marked with the sign of the cross on your forehead, for me, that is as, it, as it's supposed to be. We're taught that that's a reminder of our own mortality. And right. I, I am marked for death on that day. Mm-hmm. And for the next 40 days, I come to life. Yeah. Uh, slowly that, that, that the Holy Spirit is reviving my soul, resurrecting my soul until we yeah. see that empty tomb on Easter morning. Um, and so that slow journey, it's so reflective and representative of just the slow journey of our own discipleship. Right. You know, that sanctification, being made holy. I feel like Lent is a very um, compact representation of our holiness. Yes. Holy yes. Uh, and we need that reminder. And especially we need all of us together in community doing mm-hmm. it. And Right. I, we can't do it by ourselves. And I don't remember if you, if you remember this sermon that Bonnie Scott gave uh, on, at an orientation, but she, she talked about the importance of when we're on the journey together, that sometimes one of us forgets the story and we have to tell it to each other and remind mm-hmm. one another of it. And I always see that as this, uh, when we're walking as pilgrims, when we're walking as disciples together of when one of us is struggling and the other can remind us of who we are who's we are and the story that we're a part of. Um, Yeah. What have you given up in the past? Oh, I mean, I've really run the gamut. I've given up chocolate. Um, I gave up my car when I lived with Corey in seminary. And so I would walk to East campus, uh, Duke university and ride the bus over to the divinity school. Um, I've given up meat. Um, I think in more recent years, it's been about taking on, um, and really about creating space to listen for God, um, or to create, um, to paint, to draw, to write. Um, so those are some of the things that I've done over time. I love the embracing of the creative as like an expression of the Holy Spirit. Um, and I'm with you, I've run the gamut this season. I really felt the the conviction of the Holy Spirit to give up social media. Mm. Um, And that's been such a good practice for me to whenever I feel that compulsion to to be engaged in that way to turn and ask God um, to give me enough grace to get to the yeah Um, so uh, I would love for y'all to continue this conversation I hope that it's just been inspiring and for conversation inspiring for um, just some thought around why this is an important season and how you might embrace the next four-ish weeks as we journey toward Easter um, but Lindsay's going to close us with a prayer, a blessing. Um, but thank you for letting us be a part of your circle tonight and blessings. Receive this blessing, friends. May the dust of the wilderness hold our footprints lovingly, shaped as they are by your hurt for dust remembers. May the journey into a wilderness unfold honestly, for honesty is the gift to your soul recognizes as you. May your time in this wilderness be shaped by space rather than minutes so there is enough time for all of you. May the stones in the wilderness cry out your name loudly that your spirit recognizes the voice that has been calling you always. And may you know this wilderness has been expecting you and you find between the stones a promise growing. Friends, go forth in the love of God, the grace that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks again. Have a great night.